Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to be working on this painting back here. It's a diamond tee, an old Dodge, and I'm going backwards. Um, and a super boy in the background. All of these trucks were at the Golden Age of Trucking Museum, um, which unfortunately is no longer with us. Um, but this is a painting that is going to be a companion piece to a series of, I think I've got five other pieces, four other pieces right now. Um, so I'll show you how I work with airbrush. Um, all this down here, this is uh, full sheets of acetate laying on top of the master sketch. So what I do with that is um, I cut every piece of the truck from the grill, the headlights, everything. So they kind of get done back and forth. Um, I paint a section, then I cover it back up and cut out another section and you know that's kind of how it works with the airbrush to get that nice crisp line. So anyway, I'll get started and show you right now I'm, I'm pretty close to finishing up the trucks with the airbrush part. So um, right now I've got the grill to do, not the grill, the bumpers to do and then parts of the windows and I'm going to go back and do the trucks freehand for the rest of it. So, um, and then what they're sitting in is a field of grass, of, you know, like tall grass, like wheat or something like that. So that'll get a lot of uh, hand painting done on that. So a lot of hours, a lot of time goes into these guys, but uh, you'll see the end result. It's worth it. All right get to it. So this is Three Brothers and these are some vintage uh, big rigs that I came across at the um, Golden Age of Trucking Museum. Uh, they're gone now but I got a ton of reference photos so I was lucky to be able to visit there a whole bunch. So there is the painting that's about three by four uh, gallery wrap canvas. So what I do with this, I work with the airbrush. This mess right here, that is all the stenciling sitting on top of the master sketch. So if you look up here at the diamond T, you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. Every part of the grill, uh, every single piece of this gets masked off and then it gets painted and so I cut the mask, I do a little painting, and then cover the painted part and cut out another part of the mask. So this is a huge piece of acetate. Um, you need a really sharp, sharp knife. Uh, that gets kind of scary because I get the dropsies a lot and um, I should wear, not be barefoot when I'm doing this. <laughs> so um, I started this, I, I work on about uh, three or four paintings at a time, because as you can see, what I do is really detailed. So um, this piece, sometimes they go up on the easel and I'll work on them and then a commission might come along. <coughs> Sorry for the pings, it's a busy day on my phone. Um, where was I? Uh, so anyway, a commission might come up or another, you know, something else might take precedence. So um, I keep a log book with all the hours. I'm going on page two with this one. So I keep track of all the hours uh, when I clocked in on a, a piece and when I clock out. And that helps me keep track of the time it takes me to do these paintings. So. This one, I started the concept in 2005. I didn't actually start painting it until 2016 maybe, uh, because I was working on the other pieces in this series. So it's gotten put set aside a couple times for, for a good uh, stretch of time. So like, I'm looking at my book. Uh, it sat for a year 
And then 2018, I did an hour's worth of work on it because this isn't a, a commission. This is something on the side. So like I said, other things take precedence. When the money comes in, you get put in the background. So I'm going to do a demonstration and show you a little bit about the process. It's painstaking, but um, that's really the only way I can accomplish what I do here. All right, so check it out. All right, so first of all, I wanted to show you, um, this is a large canvas. It's like three by four feet. So this is how I keep my stencil until I'm done. So it's like a big um, envelope. Everything stays put. And when I need to put it away, I just clamp on the edges. Like so. On all sides, so nothing falls out. So, okay, so this is a big sheet of acetate. And I'm going to take the phone down and uh, give you a better look. So, hang in there. I'll be right back. Alright, so here is my stencils. Um, this basically is a sheet and a half of acetate and underneath I've got the master sketch. Bear with me. Everything's taped down so I'm only going to get this corner. So I start my sketch off on a piece of tracing paper and then lay the acetate on top of that and start cutting my uh, stencils. Every piece of that is hand cut. Um, you need a really sharp X-Acto and lots of extra blades. And um, I remember uh, t an art teacher of mine, um, the first time I used an X-Acto blade, um, the first introduction to that tool was never offer your fingers to the blade because that happens lots of band-aids but that's how you get the technical uh, aspect of the vehicles so this piece i'm working on that's three brothers and as you can see um we'll start with the diamond t over to the right there that's a diamond t a Dodge and I believe it's a super white over to the left um, right now I'm going to be working on the bumpers um, but just to show give you an example of how the stenciling works uh, you can see the grill right there on the diamond T and going down to the um, stencil there's your grill so it's all taped down right now so I don't want to dislocate anything because it's pretty well placed. Um, I use either um, painter's tape which won't uh, leave a residue on the painting. Um, I either use that if there's not too many big pieces like this um, or I also uh, will use a spray adhesive and that works really well for stenciling but you have to be careful with that um, because if you leave it on too long you could have a problem and also let me show you here I used masking tape and you can see on the tire right there and a few sections down there I left it on too long so it got gummy and became a part of the painting which I'm now going to have to remove. So FYI, don't do that. Um, mask it off, do what you need to do, and get the mask off of there. So, all right, I'll be working on this, and um, I'm going to finish up on the trucks, and then I'll go and hand paint the bottom left corner. That's a, a wheat field. So. 
I've never done that before, so that should be challenging. That's going to be a lot of hand painting and overlapping with the airbrush. But for the most part, the trucks are very well on their way. And I'm going to finish up any of the masking, go back over and do some freehand work on it. And I never, ever get rid of any piece of the um, masking or the master, master sketch until the whole painting is done. Um, <clears throat> you can see how many pieces are in here. So it's also really important. That's why I keep like that cardboard envelope to it. Um, this painting has been started and then put away for sometimes a year or two at a time. So I started this a while ago and we're gonna finish it up and, and get a nice varnish on there and move on. So, all right, join me a little later. And I'm also going to add a slideshow. I believe I have this painting from start to finish, um, almost from a blank canvas. I don't think I just started taking pictures right away. But anyway, you'll get an idea of the progress uh, with that. So with the automotive painting, um, to get those nice sharp lines with the airbrush, you really do need to do a lot of masking. So it's a lot of patience. It's not my favorite thing to do, but you know, that's the only way you get the uh, detail like that. With animal painting, um, I pretty much do them almost completely freehand. So it's nice to go back and forth and switch it up a little bit. So I will see you in a little bit. Okay, so what happens here is um, because this uh, sat for a while, um, a lot of the stenciling got damaged. So this piece is all kind of got warped up, so I couldn't use that. So there are a few different layers on here. So what I need to do, you're working in negative space, right? So what I need to do with this is I need to take this whole section off that's going to protect the sky and the rest of the vehicle um, and leave the bumpers only exposed. So I still have to cut those out, I think. No, I don't, that's already done. So we take off the tire and you see what I mean with that? I use masking tape. That's not a good thing to use. Um, so we're going to have to kind of undo a lot of that gummy junk on there. So we're going to leave everything intact as far as stenciling. So that means I have to take this off. I have to take the grill the fenders and all that off. So um, that's going to take a little while to do. I'm going to put a sharp blade in the knife and then I'm going to uh, clean up this mess. All right. So here's what I ran into. Um, this is what happens when you let pieces like this kind of hang around. You kind of lose your place. So um, you can see the acetate, the clear shiny stuff. I didn't have to cover the whole painting. I just wanted to protect the bumpers. So um, yes, of course, I could have gone back over and cut the whole thing, but I already had the pieces, except when I got to here, like, I don't know where all the rest of this stencil is. Um, 
and it's totally mis mismatched. So, um, like, what is that? Doesn't even line up with that. And that would be a bad thing. So, um, and there's like, I don't know. I don't know what happened. It's possible I recently moved out of my studio and into my home studio. So it's a mystery. So anyway, what I'm going to have to do here, um, I don't need to protect too much of the diamond tea. I just need to protect this corner and right here for any overspray. And um, so I'm going to just cut that little section out and protect it. So the good thing about the bottom of the bumpers is this is a field of grass. So there's a lot of uh, forgiveness there because there will be grass over the bumpers. So like I said, I don't need to protect the entire painting just around these two sections here. So um, I've, I prefer the thick acetate because it, I'll show you, it cuts and it snaps really easy. I hate the thin stuff because it's like rubbery and it doesn't work that well. So um, I'm going to do that and get this darn mask and stuff out of the way and then I'm going to paint those bumpers and um, that compared to all the masking uh, is like nothing. So I'll be right back with that. All right, so the protect the parts I want to protect. All right, so the parts I want to protect are not that big of a deal. And I don't need to worry about covering the whole area because um, I use uh, wrapping paper to uh, protect the rest. Acetate can be expensive, so let's not cut any more than we need to. Um, all right, so I'm just cutting out the interior. So basically, we're just going to follow this line. The lighting, I'm getting a lot of shadows. And this is really thick acetate, so I do not have to worry about my surface. I've got a really sharp knife on here. Not going to worry about this section because I need to cut that out of the acetate underneath. So I'm just going to go like a little loop. And that's it. And then that just snaps right out nice and clean. cut out this little area down here. Um, I can't see my master sketch because it's under the painting, but um, that's just a technicality. So there you go. That's all that took. I'm going to batten that down. And what I cover the rest of the uh, area with is just craft paper. And this, I've got tons of this stuff. Um, this is what you get 
in a lot of the packaging these days, so I save all of my packaging paper. I don't have to buy any of that stuff. Alright, so I'm going to go around and tighten this down, and then I'm going to get to the painting part. So I'll see you soon. All right, so this is the first time I've actually um, had my equipment going since I left the studio. Um, just before I left, I had a uh, couple of parts on my compressor and my airbrush go, so it took a little while to get those in. So I hope the shadows, I can already tell we do have some shadows, I'm going to try and fix that. Okay, that's a little better. Alright, that's the best I can do right now. That's one of the biggest challenges I've had is um, setting up new studio space and um, getting the lighting right in here, but we're getting there. So I'll just start out with a little freehand and then paint's a little thick. Normally I would already have this masked off. Um, hopefully my head isn't popping in the scene. Um, but it took me so long so far um, just to set up and get it all together. So I am just going to do a couple quickies. And then what I'll end up doing, yeah, my paint is very thick, so there's another stall in my day. Um, Alright. Oh. Just to give you a little gist of it. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop talking, and I'm just going to paint. So that is how... We do freehand masking. Voila.
right, so that was that. Um, easy peasy, right? But wait, there's more. Um, as much work as I've already done on this piece, a lot of people might think, oh wow, that's almost done, looks good. Uh, not at all. I'm only about halfway through on this. I pay a great deal of attention to these trucks, um, the detail that goes into them. Um, there's hood ornaments, there's steering wheels, there's side mirrors and windshield wipers, stuff like that that still needs to be added. Um, of course, the, the grass, that's going to take a good deal of time in itself. So, um, yeah, it, it, you know, the, the trucks are very technical and I try to pay very close attention to detail because the auto enthusiasts know. Um, if anything's off, they're going to pick it out right like that. Uh, I've done portraits of trucks that have been modified and um, they, they know. They'll, they'll point out right away if, if something doesn't belong there. Um, you know, whether or not it actually was on, on the, the uh, reference that I was looking on or not, doesn't matter. Uh, so I respect that because I don't know as much as uh, some of these people out there do for sure. Um, so uh, this one, the fifth piece of uh, the Big Boys series. Um, I have my cruising exhibit coming up uh, in another month, so you'll get to see all of them in that. Uh, it's a studio tour, so if you're interested in, in uh, seeing the upcoming tours, I've got the cruising tour and then I've got a holiday show coming up right after that. So. Uh, you know, maybe follow me so you don't miss anything and, and you can see kind of the rest of the series uh, that goes along with this. So, um, yeah, while I was working on this one, I came up with an idea for the next one, which will have a Twilight theme. I'm kind of looking forward to that. Uh, I didn't expect to be doing another automotive painting for a while because I've got you know, I've got my carousel series and my wildlife series going at the same time as well. But that'll be a 2021 project and I'll, uh, you know, look into my reference and find, I'm sure I've got the perfect truck for that. So that's something to look forward to. Um, meanwhile, so what happens next is I put this painting away for a couple days. I don't look at it. Um, I just walk away from it and then in a few days I'll, I'll put it back on the easel, bring out my reference pictures and really take a good look at um, the pieces that I'm working off of and uh, you know really tweak the detail, go in some with some brushwork and take care of that. Um, so anyway I'll keep working on this, keep you updated on the progress and um, you know, if anybody has any questions, certainly to ask me uh, whether you're an artist or an art lover. Um, I'm always happy to answer technical questions for anybody working with the airbrush. Um, or, you know, if you have any questions about my process, what I do, if you're interested in a commission, let me know. Um, other than that, Get on out there, have a good day, and thank you so much for coming by. I always appreciate it. Take care. <laughs> this is the squeakiest damn chair. Oy. Okay. Tuck the little sisters in. Meanwhile, uh, do, 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 meanwhile, dun, 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 I forgot what I was going to say. Okay, so cruising exhibit. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Totally freaking mind melted. Ah. Uh, Who's an exhibit? Anyway, I, I, I don't know.
Got to wing it from here, right? I got nothing. I got nothing. It's just like disappeared. Airbrush part. Recording, but I'm not going to use the sound. Oh, why not? Now I will. Crying airbrush. <laughs> 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 